This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. If we look at traded debt, traded debt begins to get a little bit more complicated than what we saw previously on our non-traded debt, so our, our bank loans. Uh, there's several reasons for this, uh, which are there at the bottom of your notes, uh, because what we have there is traded debt uh, could be irredeemable. Okay, so if I'm a company, I issue the debt and that debt never, ever, ever has to be repaid. So therefore, there will be interest payments to infinity. There will be tax savings on those interest payments to infinity. And when I'm discounting them back using the cost of debt, it should give me the current tradable market value. Okay, uh, so there'll be some complications within the. Uh, based upon the fact now that we're looking at a market value of that tradable debt. Uh, second aspect that we'll go through and look at is redeemable debt. So again, I issue debt. The issue there that you then have is that that debt at a point in time, maybe in five years time, will need to be repaid. So when we are working out the cost of debt using the IRR of the cash flows, there's not only an interest payment to consider, there is not only a tax saving on the interest to consider but there is also a redemption value to consider so that makes the IRR calculation that little bit more complex. The third and final aspect that we will go through and look at is the convertible debt which is a complicated version of redeemable debt isn't it because convertible debt gives the holder of the debt so the person who we have issued the debt to the investor the option of taking their cash back or taking shares. Now that creates a problem for us when we come to look at the redemption value in the IRR calculation. Are we going to put in the redemption value of the cash or are we going to go through and put in the redemption value of the shares? So that's something that we can go through and consider when we come to look at your convertible debt. But what we'll do is we'll look at them in order. We'll look at irredeemable debt first We'll then go on to look at redeemable debt before we then finish it off with your convertible debt. What I also want you to take from this little introduction to your traded debt it is how traded debt works. And I think you should be reasonably familiar with this from previous studies. Uh, traded debt is always quoted in a $100 block. So essentially... There are 100 individual debentures, each one with a $1 nominal value. So if there are 100 of them at $1, then therefore the total nominal value is 100. It's just the way that debt is traded. You know, if you look at the way shares are traded, it is quoted per share, isn't it? Okay, we accept that because that's the norm and we see that a lot. You know, we, we tend not to see so much traded debt, do we? Okay, if you're a little investor yourself, you may have bought and sold shares, but you may not have ventured out into other investing aspects and maybe bought or sold debt. If you do, when you buy it, it is denominated in blocks of 100. And that block of 100 has a $100 nominal value. Okay, uh, So therefore, what we do is all of the calculations are based upon a 100 nominal value amount of debt. Okay. Uh, it then goes on to say there that interest on the debt is stated as a percentage of the nominal value. So looking there at the coupon rates. So if you have, say, a coupon rate, is it at 10%? 10% of the 100 is $10. And that $10 is your interest that you pay per annum. It is what you have promised to the debt holder to pay them. Okay. Uh, likewise, we also need to go through there and think about the redemption value, but I will leave that redemption value until we come to look at your redeemable debt a little bit later on. What I want you to take on board from here, as I said, is that there are three types of tradable debt, which is irredeemable, redeemable and convertible so you'll need to spot in a question which one it is and then you need to take on board as well or, or appreciate the fact that the benches when they are traded are traded in blocks of a hundred and that the interest on that block of a hundred the coupon rate is essentially 
multiplied by the $100 par value to work out the promised coupon interest paid each year. Okay, uh, And as we will see, that coupon interest of 10% is not the same as the cost of debt to the company, primarily as we see because of the tax savings on interest. Okay.